Hey guys, so this is 9.7. This will be our last lesson for this chapter. Um, so we're doing samples and surveys today. It's a lot of vocab. Um, so if you can print this off, I would do this. It's in. It should be in Google Classroom. Um, and then so we'll do some vocab and then kind of work with it and then I'll be it today. So I want to warm up with this. So let's say that this histogram um, shows that a manager of a Thai restaurant wants to know how often people in her city eat Thai food. Okay, so what she does is she surveys 200 of her customers. The manager says that the histogram, the results in the histogram show that most people in the city um, eat Thai food at least 10 times per year. Do you think there are any problems with the survey? So what this shows is she wants to know how many people in the city obviously eat Thai food. And then so she surveys her customers um, and she finds that majority of them um, eat it between 10 to 19 per year, about 10, more than 10 times per year. Well, there is a problem with this survey, okay? So the problem is, is that she only surveyed her customers. So what this happens is that when she surveys only her customers, obviously it's people who went to the restaurant, so it's probably people who generally enjoy Thai food. So the problem is how the survey was conducted. So there is there a problem with the survey? Yes, okay. Um, most people she interviews will like Thai food because they eat at her restaurant. So the problem is the relationship rest I cannot spell restaurant today. Rest, it's always a word, one word. So the problem is, is how the people relate to the population. So the population, we'll talk about this in a second, that vocab, is she wants to know how many people in the entire city like Thai food but she only is surveying her customers. If she really wanna know the people in her entire city, she should have to um, make sure she interviews people in the entire city and not just the people in her restaurant, okay? So that's what we're gonna talk about today is basically how to conduct surveys and samples so that they're not um, biased. Um, and in other words, they're a fair trial, okay? So in other words, we're gonna start with some vocab. So when collecting data, data we need to make sure your methods are fair and that you accurately represent the adult results. So there are actually four types of data that we want to talk about today. Okay, the two first types is data can either be quantitative or qualitative. Okay, so it's either or, one of these two. What this means is it's quantitative is it has units that can be measured and numerically compared, like people's ages, okay? That's numerically compared. Um, so like someone could be 13 years old compared to 15 years old. Um, time, so maybe like the time you were able to run a 100 meters. Um, weight is another one. So anything that can be numerically um um, numerically uh, represented is quantitative. Qualitative describes a category that cannot be measured numerically. Okay, so this would be like if you're comparing people's hair color. Okay, hair color is like brown, red. Um, how about someone's attitude towards a specific food? Okay, um, do they like it? They don't like it? Um, another one that's kind of a sneaky one is actually what if we did zip codes? Because zip codes, remember, are a representation of an area. It's not like a, an amount that can be measured. It's just a representation. So like numbers that are just representations are also qualitative. Okay, the other two is that it's either, now, so it's either one of these two. And then you can also label it as univariate or bivariate. Okay, univariate means that the data set only is only one variable. So like, let's say your cost of internet service. There's only one variable there, the cost, okay? Um, we could also do like age of students. Okay, there's only one thing there. 
where bivariate is when the data set has two variables. Like what if we're comparing height and weight? Okay, or also time and distance. So anytime there's two variables, it's bivariate. Okay, so let's just do a few examples. In each one of these, one, two, three, we're gonna name as qualitative or quantitative. So how about your favorite movie? That would be qualitative, because you can't put a number. Your favorite movie isn't like number one movie. That's not the title of the movie, okay? Um, we, your favorite movie might be like Star Wars. Okay, that's qualitative. How about the number of students in different schools who speak Spanish or who take Spanish? This would be quantitative because we're numbering or we're finding a numerical value for the number of students in this school. Okay, here's a sneaky one. How about football jerseys? That is actually qualitative. Because football jerseys cannot be measured. You can't put, like, you can't measure a football jersey. It's just the number 23, okay? So football jerseys is, it's qualitative because it's not measurable. Okay, um, and this next one, let's, let's each set of data um, univariate or bivariate. How about, we're going to label each of these univariate or, or, it should be or, not of. So the atomic weight of elements in the periodic table. Well, that's univariate because we're just doing the atomic weight, not comparing it to anything. How about the edge lengths and the columns of cubes? So we're trying for finding the edge lengths and the columns of cubes. So there's two here. So this would be bivariate. Okay. Next thing then is we got to go into how, so there's types of data. And then now we got to go into the different types we can sample data, okay? First thing is, is a little definition, is the entire group that you want information about. So in other words, up here, she wants information about her entire city, okay? So the entire, the entire group is actually called the population, okay? So let's say you want to sample how many students, high school students, um, are watching a TV before a test. Well, the entire population is high school students, but the part you actually survey is a sample because it's really hard to, you don't want to have to sample or survey every single high school student in the entire world. You're going to have to pick a sample that represents that population. So just the part you survey is called the sample, okay? Now, there's types of sampling. There's either random sampling there's systematic sampling. Or stratified sampling. Okay. What random sampling it is, is that all members of the population have an equal chance of getting picked. So how about um, a good one would be like drawing names from a hat. Okay, so you put everyone's name in a hat, shake it up, and then you start drawing names because everyone in name in that hat has an equal chance of being picked. Systematic is where you select a number, n, at random, and then survey every nth person. So this would be like, let's say you want to um, survey high school students. So you go to Lutheran West and you ask every third person the survey question who walks through the door um, in the morning. Okay, stratified is that you would separate the population into smaller groups, then survey random people in that group. So a good one would be like, I'm going to write this down first, would be asking random kids or random students in each class. So a good example of this one would be, so if you went around to every classroom third period and then randomly pick people from those classes to um, be part of your survey, because they're already separated into smaller groups into each classroom, and then from there, those smaller groups are picking random people. Okay, so there's our vocab. So now let's talk about a few um, examples. Okay, so let's say number six. Let's say you want to find how many DVDs students in your school rent in a month. You interview every 10th teenager you see at the mall. What sampling method are you using, and is it a good sample? How could it be better? Okay, so... 
every 10th teenager, well, that would be systematic, because systematic, remember, is selecting a number. So this would be systematic. Okay. Now let's think about this. Is this a good sample? Well, you got to compare what your population is to what you're sampling. Okay, so you want to know how many students at your school rent in a month. So students at your school would be your population. That's your total people you want to figure out if they rent DVDs. So what you do is you interview te teenagers at the mall. So this would be your sample. Well, the problem is, is there's a discrepancy here. You want to know the people at your school, but you're interviewing teenagers at the mall. So this is not good. This would not be a good um, sampling method because you may be sampling kids sampling students not at your school. So if you go to the mall, you're going to encounter teenagers that aren't at your school. So you're going to kind of get a bad representation of what you're trying to survey. Okay, now if you want to know how many kids at the mall watch DVDs, so you go to the mall and sample, that might be better. Okay, so is this data up here, is it univariate or bivariate? It'd be univariate because you're just doing how many, how many DVDs. And is it qualitative or quantitative? Well, you don't want to know how many DVDs, so this would be quantitative. Okay, the last um, vocab word I'm going to talk about is something called bias. So what bias mean is a survey question has bias when it contains assumptions that may or may not be true. Bias can influence opinion and make the survey results less accurate. Samples can be biased based on location and sampling methods. So the first one up here, this would actually be biased sample or biased survey because, again, you're trying to find how many DVDs students at your school rent but you go to the mall to sample. So it'd be biased because you're not really representing the population well if you're asking people at the mall, okay? Another way a bias can work is the way you ask the question, okay? So let's try this. I'm number seven. Let's say a reporter wants to find out what kind of movies are most popular with a local residence. So she goes to the residence. We don't know how she's sampling, but this is the question she asks. Do you prefer exciting action movies or documentaries? Well, this would be biased because she's actually trying to influence an opinion. So she's adding this word exciting action movies in there and then just documentaries. So she's kind of like saying, hey, do you like action movies? They're great. Or do you like those boring documentaries? Okay, so this would be yes. This is biased because exciting makes action movies sound better. So what do you think people are going to pick? Okay. All right, let's try number eight. So you want to determine what percent of teens ages 14 to 18 watch wrestling on TV. Okay, so what do you want to do? What's your population? So we want to know what percent of all teenagers. So all teenagers is your... Um, population. Ages 14 to 18 watch wrestling on TV. So how do you sample? So you go to a high school wrestling match and you ask every third te teenager whether he or she watches wrestling on TV. Will the results be biased or unbiased? So again, you're using a stratified method. I'm sorry, systemat systematic method because you're asking every third teenager. But let's see that where are you sampling from? Okay, you're sampling from a high school wrestling match. Well, the problem is, is do you think that high school people at a wrestling match are going to like watching wrestling? Most likely, yes. So what the problem is, is you're trying to find teenagers as a whole, but instead of going somewhere that represents all teenagers, you're only asking teenagers at a wrestling match. So this would be biased. Yes. Because if you go to a wrestling match, you are more likely to watch 
wrestling on TV. So the results might be biased if you say that, yeah, a lot of, a lot of teenagers watch wrestling, but the problem is you sampled people at a wrestling match who were probably most likely going to watch wrestling. Okay, let's try another one. So I want to know the um, number nine. Let's say the newspaper staff at Lutheran West Stampede decided to sample student opinion about high school athletics. The newspaper designed a questionnaire and distributed to the first 50 students to arrive at, at a varsity basketball game. What type of sampling method was used and were the findings biased or unbiased? Okay, so let's think about this. First, to find bias, let's first um, do our um, uh, type of sampling method. This one's kind of sneaky. So the first thing is, let's figure out what our sample is. So Luther decided to um, sample student opinion about high school athletics. So the students as a whole, okay? So what they're going to do is the student body as a whole. So all students would be your population. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. So population would be all students. Okay. Well, let's do our sample. What our sample is, is they go to a basketball game and choose um, fit the first 50 students to arrive there. So again, what this is actually doing is this is actually stratified. This one's tricky because you're basically, you're taking it, you're putting it into a smaller group. So you're taking the whole student body and you're chunking it into a basketball game. And then from there, you are going to, um, uh, find those people. So this is stratified. Okay, so let's figure out if this is biased or not. What is our population and what's our sample? So our population is we want to know about all students' opinion. But we're going to question people, their opinion on athletics, okay? But we're going to question students who arrive at a varsity basketball game. Well, the problem is, is if you as a student go to a basketball game, you're most likely going to like athletics, okay? So this is actually biased because people at a basketball game are more likely to like sports. So the problem is, is that, again, you could say, oh, yeah, my samples show that a lot of students like this stuff or like athletics. But the problem is, is that you didn't interview all the students that didn't go to the basketball game. You only interviewed students that were there. So they're probably going to say some good stuff about the basketball games. Okay, last but not least, um, I just want to do a quick review. Um, let's classify this data as either qualitative or quantitative, and then as univariate or bivariate. So how about the average number of visitors per day at each of the six theme parks? Okay. Well, I want to know the number of visitors. So this would be quantitative because we can measure that. We can measure how many visitors are there. And then since we're only doing the no average number of visitors, this would be univariate because there's only one variable. How about monthly low temperatures in Rochester, New York? Again, we can measure temperature. Remember, quantitative means numerical value or measurable. So this would be quantitative. And again, it is univariate because there's only one variable, temperature. How about the names of the U.S. presidents in the states they were born in? Well, I can't measure a name or put a numerical value to that, so this would be qualitative. And then this would be bivariate because you're doing two things, names of presidents and the states they lived in. How about favorite color and a person's gender? Again, this would be qualitative because you can't measure someone's color or you can't measure their gender. This would be qualitative. And then again, since there's two variables, it'd be bivariate. All right, guys, have a great day.